Rewind back six, seven, eight years ago in the game hunting and game collecting scene. There's one thing that changed. Yes, a lot of things changed, as everything does. But there's one thing that changed so much, so drastically, that it has me questioning, how did we get here? When did we get here? Let's talk about it. So many things have changed in the game hunting scene, the game collecting scene in the past decade or so. So much so that one of my friends was asking me a question recently who was interviewing me for a documentary and he said, when you first started collecting in the video game world on YouTube, what's really changed up till now? And I started thinking of little things that have changed a little bit, a little bit of wiggle room. And then there's one thing when I thought about it, I was like, oh my gosh, this has completely changed. This has went from north to south, from east to west. This is as far off as anything could be, as anything could change. And I'm gonna start off by telling you guys an example that I experienced firsthand back in the day when I started collecting video games on YouTube. So when Ricky and I used to film our episodes on our old show, Retro Liberty, we had a friend who would kind of pop around here and there. He wasn't necessarily a close friend or anything outside of game collecting, but we would definitely see him all the time out game hunting. He had his own channel, super nice guy, and he would get some awesome scores. Well, we would talk to him all the time when we would see him out there game hunting, and we would watch his YouTube show. And about maybe seven months, eight months, into knowing him, I went to go look up his channel to see what his newest finds were in our area, and I was like, hmm, his channel's gone. I wonder what happened to his channel. And I started kind of poking around with some other people in the retro game hunting community. Come to find out, people start telling me a story. Yeah, did you hear recently? He found a boxed arrow fighters, like a really good boxed arrow fighters, and I was like, sweet, that's awesome. What happened? They're like, yeah, he got it for super cheap, and then he sold it for a lot of money a lot more money than he paid for it. I'm talking a lot more money than he paid for it. And I was like, oh, okay, all right. That's the moment Ricky and I learned. Flipping, upselling, reselling, lightly even trading sometimes was a huge no-no in the retro game collecting scene. Man, Ricky, you know what? Sometimes it's really cool just to look back and think we've acquired all these games and Games like Contra Force that most people don't have. It's really interesting and just so so cool to have these in our collection. Yeah, that's true. But do you ever get tempted like to sell them? Never, dude. I, I've actually never been tempted in my life to A, sell a game. I, I would never do, and if I was to sell a game like Contra Force, I would only do it to a friend if he needed the game. And I'd probably give it to him for like a dollar. Most of the times I give my games away for free. I just offer it up to people just to be a part of the community and help people out that need them, so. We started to dive into this a little bit more and kind of look up some of the YouTube comments of what people were saying in the game collecting community at that time, and it was made very clear to us while reading all this, wow, do not, do not in this community, especially don't promote it, don't buy things for cheap and don't sell them for a lot more money. Back then, not saying there's no passion at all, I'm not saying that at all, but it was just a different mindset back then. When you bought a video game, especially on YouTube, and you were a creator of some sort, you bought that because you wanted to keep it for yourself and you wanted to play it for yourself, and if you were gonna sell it, you sold it for super bro hookups to somebody you know that needs it. I'm not saying yet if I think that's right or wrong, but that's just the way it was back then. If you fast forward to now in the retro game hunting community, let me make this very clear. I talk to these people that I'm about to name off, so this isn't casting any shade. If anything, these guys are really good friends of mine, but channels like Chase After the Right Price, channels like Retro Rick, who are doing really well in the retro game hunting, retro game collecting, nostalgia collecting community. But it is very promoted, it is very obvious, it's almost the point of their channels to buy things for cheap, flip them, resell them, whatever you wanna do with your money. I could care less personally what you do with your money, but that's what the channels are about. How can we do these flips? And this really caught into my mind even more because Retro Rick, posted something on his YouTube community, and he was like, look, I bought this for this, I resold it for this, the comments are filled with, that's awesome, that's awesome, I agree, that's awesome, but I told him, I'm like, dude, this is so crazy, because if me or Ricky would have posted that seven, eight years ago in the retro game hunting community, done, banished, we would have been gone 
from the retro game hunting community. That was the no-no of all no-nos. You do not do that. And I started wondering what, what was the shift? Where did the shift happen where this became more normalized, more okay? And I started thinking maybe there's two reasons. The first is I know flipping is very popular in general right now. Heck, 90% of the times when you turn on YouTube, you get some guy who's standing in front of a Ferrari in front of his big house and he's like, hey, yo, I'm a flipper on eBay and Amazon and I make, I'll show you how I went from being a, a loser to a, a multimillionaire in just a year. I don't think that's how any of them talk, but that's how I hear them when I see them. So I know flipping has become popular and maybe that also kind of just transferred into the world of gaming, retro game collecting as well, because it is stuff that is flippable. The second thing I could think of that's a little more loose thought process, it's probably not a good thought process, but it's just mine anyway, is that the passion for retro is still there. I am not saying it's not, but what I'm saying is things like even emulation was another big, big no-no back in the day. Oh, emulation, who are you? We only play on real hardware. But now with things changing and classic consoles, NES Classic, SNES, TurboGrafx-16, Sega Genesis, PlayStation hacks, it's much more accessible. And a lot of people that were back in the day, super hardcore against it are like, well, this is actually pretty cool. But I'm curious, were you around back in the day when this was a big no-no? And the shift happened kind of flawlessly, and I'm not saying Chase up to the right price and Retro Rick are the only ones doing this. No, <laughs> there are hundreds upon thousands. These are just close friends of mine, so I was gonna use them as an example. I do wanna make it very clear that yes, I know there were reselling channels on the internet five, six, seven, eight years ago. One of our greatest friends, Scott JHMDF, was doing that, Scott Squatch. I'm just saying that a lot more of out and been a lot more polarizing ever since flipping became the norm, not Norm the Gaming Historian. But I never really saw the shift happen. I didn't see it slowly happening. I just realized like, oh, that, that is normal now. But when I thought back and put myself back seven, eight years ago on YouTube, there were times where Ricky and I were almost like a little nervous, like what? What if we really don't wanna sell this right now? Because in the video, you wanna be truthful. That's always what you wanna do anyway on YouTube. You wanna be truthful about what you're doing or just don't say it in general because you don't have to tell everybody everything about your channel and your life. They don't necessarily need to know. But it's like, you know, we had a show focused on game hunting. We had a show focused on game collecting and our show back then, the NES Pursuit was kind of polarized in the world of retro game hunting, retro game collecting. You know, the game chasers we're talking about as Metal Jesus, a happy console gamer, a lot of these people were giving us shout outs so we had a lot of light on us and we were after we talked and found out that our friend's channel pretty much got deleted because he didn't want to be a part of this anymore because he was getting bullied so much or getting heckled so much he wanted out ricky and i would be like okay well in the video i said i want to keep this and i meant it when i said it but now i've had this for four years and i don't really care about this now i want to sell it what what if somebody finds out what if somebody sees that i'm doing this we would even make jokes sometimes like oh, ricky sold that and we'd make like a big laugh joke about it because it was like oh you would never really actually do that you would never really actually sell something that you bought on the show that you intended to keep all right, so today I'm on my way to a garage sale. I saw an ad on Craigslist where the guy said he has a bunch of um, really rare video games, uh, retro games, and he said for really good prices. So I'm on my way with the family right now and uh, we'll check in in a minute when we get there. Said he had rare games. This game's so gotta be freaking kidding me. Another thing, another big thing, a lot of the community back then too, if you were going to flip something or you were going to sell something, let's say I bought Tatsunoko versus Capcom and let's just say it's worth a thousand dollars, but I bought it at a yard sale for two dollars. Let's say I do decide to sell it. 
the mindset back then in the community was very much, and not saying this is a wrong mindset at all, is, well, if you're gonna get rid of it, you kinda have a duty, you kinda have an obligation to basically sell it to someone in the community or trade it with someone in the community, basically for what you got it for. There wasn't really a sense back then of like, well, you can make some good money on it. No, it was more like, well, you got it for five bucks. Really, you should be selling it or trading it to a buddy for 10 bucks or so, something in the range. Not of like, oh, I'm gonna go quadruple my money and make it, sell it for $800, $500, $300, anything like that. And the reason I wanted to film this is because this is really important for you guys to answer. This isn't really important for me to answer how I feel. I personally believe and don't really care what people do with their games or their toys or anything like that. I believe once it's theirs and they bought it, they can do whatever they want with it. But I'm curious because I know the YouTube community is a big part of this because there was definitely a shift. I'm not saying if it was right or wrong or if it was just a different mindset back then or if it's because game collecting just got more popularized on YouTube back, you know, 10 so years ago when game hunting channels started appearing and different people like that. So I'm just curious. This is more of a curiosity where I really am interested to see what people say in the community in the comments. So please, on this video, I don't normally push that kind of stuff, but I really would like to hear what you think, where you are at. Do you think it's weird or do you think it's bad that this has changed? Were you one of those people back in the day who were shaming, you know, people who were selling stuff for more money than they got it for? I don't know. That's what the point of this video is. I want to know what you think. Let me know. Again, do what you want. In my opinion, I'm a big believer in telling people, hey, you, you do what you want to do. I'll do what I want to do. Freedom. Boy, I miss freedom. All right, community. Let's see that due diligence in the comments below. Tell us. Tell me what you think. Where are you at with all this? Goodbye. Remember to unsubscribe, always, always unsubscribe and leave a bad comment. See ya.